Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. My name is Sava, and today we are continuing our discussion of event studies, perhaps one of the most useful techniques that you can use in financial econometrics. In one of the last videos, we have discussed how to apply the three most common models in event studies, that is, constant return model, market adjusted model, and the kappa. But there is an easier way of how one might apply event studies more concisely without calculating a bunch of cumulative or buy and hold of normal returns, a bunch of standard errors, and it involves multiple linear regressions with dummy variables. So here we have got our usual setup and we will still test whether the BlizzCon 2018 had any significant impact on the stock valuation of Activision Blizzard. Uh, BlizzCon 2018 was notable because that was uh, the time when Warcraft 3 Reforged has been announced and this game has proven to be one of the most disastrous titles Blizzard has ever released and it, by all means, has harmed their business model. So we want to test whether the market has anticipated how bad Warcraft 3 Reforged would be, and whether the market was efficient in incorporating this new information into the stock price. To start thinking about how one might implement event studies in the regression framework, we first of all need to calculate the stock return day by day and the respective market returns and as the market return we will have the return of the s p 500 so for the stock return we as usual divide the price today by the price yesterday and subtract one and we do the same for the market index so index value today divided by the index value yesterday minus one and we can bottom right click both of those formulas all the way down to get all of our returns every single day and we've got the returns from end of july all the way until end of December 2018 and we are interested in what happened around the date of BlizzCon which was 2nd of November 2018 but as it happened uh, after the markets closed on the 2nd of November which was a Friday we will be looking at the 5th of November as our main day for event studies estimations. So here we can already calculate our market adjusted return for the market adjusted model. So market adjusted return is basically just the uh, difference between the stock return and the respective market return in every single trading day. So basically this is assuming that the stock's alpha is equal to zero and the stock's beta is equal to one. For uh, a greater detailed discussion, for a more detailed discussion of the market adjusted model, please consult our uh, earlier video on event studies. And that's pretty much all we need in terms of, of um, raw input data, in terms of returns, for our regression. What we are left with are the dummy variables that we will use to code our event period, anticipation period, and adjustment period. Uh, dummy variables are handy in that case because you can identify uh, which date are you interested in as the date of the event, in our case, 5th of November, and how long do you uh, want the anticipation window and the adjustment window to be. And here we can just uh, type in once for the days we're interested in in each of the three cases. So first of all, we need to go to the 5th of November 2018 and uh, dub it as the event day. So we just need to scroll all the way down to November the 5th. Here it is. And as this is the column where we've got the event, uh, we need to specify that the dummy variable is equal to one. On the day of the event and zero otherwise and this will allow us to estimate a coefficient of the impact of the event itself on the stock return and that's exactly what we want in event studies and the coefficient standard error that will be automatically generated in a linear regression will allow us to test how significant that impact was and whether we can assume it is significantly different from zero so that blizzcon was actually impactful for the valuation of activision blizzard now uh, we need to code in a similar way our anticipation and adjustment windows. So here we see that our anticipation window uh, allows us to test whether there was some insider trading perhaps 
or whether the market has uh, anticipated the effect uh, BlizzCon and the announcement of Warcraft 3 Reforged uh, would have on Blizzard uh, corporate value. So we need to fill in once over here uh, in uh, a number of days in some window right up to the event day. So we need to fill in once somewhere over here and we can arbitrarily choose how long our anticipation window is, I mean up to some reasonable bounds. And um, most commonly um, you select your uh, anticipation and adjustment windows to be between 5 and 10 trading periods. Um, in the last video we selected 10 days, so let's stick with that here as well and select 3, 6, 9, 10 uh, cells and just type in once in those. And for the adjustment window we need to do exactly the same thing but for the 10 trading days that follow the event day. So we select our 10 cells and we type in once in all of those. So we drag it all the way down and we get our 10 ones that uh, code our adjustment window in terms of dummy variables. And now we can proceed to uh, apply linear regressions and uh, deriving the results that would be very similar to the ones we obtained using uh, constant return, market adjusted and kappa models in the earlier video. So here we've got uh, our first uh, regression output template and uh, here we will uh, try and uh, estimate the impact of BlizzCon, its anticipation and adjustment afterwards on Blizzard corporate value. So here we have to select a 4x5 uh, array for the linest output because we've got four coefficients. We've got our constant that would specify constant return, so the return in normal times when no event is happening or due to happen or have just happened, and the three coefficients would specify the average abnormal returns in the event period, here only one day, so it will be similar to just the abnormal return in the event day, and average abnormal returns in the anticipation period and in the adjustment period, because the dummy variables will pick that effect up and translate it into the regression coefficients. So now we'll select a 4x5 uh, array and enforce the linest function. And as our dependent variable, we can just select the raw return of the stock, and our independent variables would be the dummy variables that denote the event, the anticipation, and the adjustment periods. So we select those three arrays as our independent variables, as our axis. We need the constant because the constant would uh, denote our normal constant return when nothing happens. And uh, we need the additional statistics because we want the standard errors to estimate significance. And we enforce this formula using shift control enter and we get our result. And we can see here that just as in the earlier video when we applied all those models uh, using uh, averages and uh, cumulative or buy and hold of normal returns, uh, the results are very similar. First of all, the uh, average of normal return uh, during the anticipation window is very close to zero. Uh, but the average normal returns in the adjustment period and on the event itself are very uh, high in magnitude and negative, while the constant is also negligibly close to zero. To formally verify our reasoning, we have to apply t-tests for all of those coefficients. So first of all, we need to calculate the t-stats, which would be just coefficient magnitudes divided by the respective standard errors, and as Linus conveniently reports standard errors right below the coefficients, this formula is really easy to enforce and we can drag it around and get all of our t-stats and our p-values would be just the result of applying a two-tailed t-test. So we have to apply a t-dist um, two-tailed uh, formula with uh, the absolute value of our t-stat as the first argument and the number of the degrees of freedom as our second argument. The number of the degrees of freedom is conveniently reported again in the linest output over here on the right-hand side in the fourth row. And we need to lock the column here, but we don't need to lock the row because uh, we won't uh, drag it uh, down. And as we copy it down for other regressions, we want the degrees of freedom to change from one linest output to another. So it's a clever way of preparing your template so that then you can copy everything across and you cannot, so that you don't need to bother uh, typing in all those formulas over and over again. So we can close the bracket as for now, enforce the formula, and drag it around 
for all of our four coefficients. So now, comparing the p-values and the magnitudes, we can see that the result is very similar to the one we obtained in the previous video. We see that the impact of the event itself, so the abnormal return uh, on the event day, is significantly negative because the t-stat is reasonably high in magnitude and the p-value is lower than 5%, which means that the effect is statistically significant at 5%. Uh, the anticipation uh, effect is very small and insignificant because p-value is close to 1. It's much, much higher than 5% or any reasonable confidence interval you can choose. And the adjustment effect is also negative and significant because uh, the coefficient is negative, the t-stat is negative and reasonably high in magnitude, and p-value is lower than 5%. It's even lower than 1%, so here we can be even surer that the adjustment effect is indeed negative. So the constant return model allows us to tell that, first of all, the uh, information announced uh, at BlizzCon, uh, most notably the uh, Warcraft 3 Reforged game, has uh, significantly negatively impacted the corporate value of Activision Blizzard, and the market has not been fully efficient in incorporating this information uh, straight away, as it took another 10 trading days for the price to adjust and incorporate the negative information fully. And uh, as uh, the coefficients are of the same size, that's what tells us that there has been underreaction and not overreaction. If coefficients of those would be of different signs, then we would tell that there has been overreaction, as the market would have bounced back from the initial decline, or if the uh, event coefficient has been positive, the market has uh, bounced downward from an initial uh, bump upward. So now we can apply the same logic, the same template, to calculate our coefficients and our average of normal returns for the market adjusted model. And here it's very simple and very similar to the earlier uh, output, as we'll just need to apply the linest function. But as our dependent variable now, we will select the market adjusted return instead of the simple return. And it will take care of all of the adjustments that we made in the market adjusted model in the earlier video. And our uh, independent variable here are also just the three columns with dummy variables that will denote the event period, the anticipation period, and the adjustment period. And we need the constant specified, and we need our stats to be fully reported, because again, we need our standard errors. So then we can enforce the formula using shift control enter and get uh, very similar results, both in sign and magnitude. But to be uh, sure, we need to copy uh, these formulas across so that um, we will calculate t stats and p values again for those coefficients with um, new coefficients, new degrees of freedom, and new standard errors. And here we can see that the results are even more significant now as both uh, the event effect uh, of minus 7.32% and the adjustment effect of minus 2.42%, both are average of normal returns per trading day, are significant at 1%, with p-values being very close to zero and t-stats exceeding three in terms of magnitude. And again, the constant and the anticipation effect are also minuscule and negligible, which means that the market was not anticipating this effect, the effect has been significantly negative and the market did not fully integrate it into the stock price initially it took some time to adjust so we can conclude the market has been inefficient and given the fact that those are both of the same signs we can see that the market underreacted to the release of new information and now finally we can apply the same logic to the CAPM estimation and in the CAPM estimation we do exactly what we do all the time with CAPM regressions, we just introduce the market return as one of the independent variables so that the linear regression can uh, pick up the beta itself so that we don't have to do anything else from our side. But now we need to select uh, five columns instead of four as we've got an additional uh, independent variable in our market return. So we can apply Linus and select our stock return, raw stock return in that case again, as our dependent variable. And here we'll get four independent variables, namely our market return, S&P 500 return, and the three dummy variables. Those don't change. And we input one as our constant. We want the statistics to be reported for the standard errors. So we put one here, close the bracket, and enforce the linest function with shift control enter. And now we can also just copy these across 
for t statistics and p values being recalculated with new standard errors and new uh, degrees of freedom. Drag this across and see that even in this setting, uh, our event studies model picks up on exactly the same effects. Negative effect on the event day, even more pronounced than in other models, and negative adjustment effect are relatively as pronounced as in all other models. And our beta is higher than one, uh, albeit not by that much, and significant, which means that uh, while uh, the stock price of Activision Blizzard does respond to overall market movements, the uh, movements that the model picked up previously on the event day and on the adjustment period are not explainable by market movements alone. So we can be reasonably sure, as in all three settings, we pick up strong negative effects of the BlizzCon on the corporate value of Activision Blizzard that Warcraft 3 Reforged and its announcement has indeed been a failure for the company. And that's all there is for event studies using linear regressions. This technique is really useful and easy to implement in one go without worrying too much about calculating a bunch of standard errors separately and a bunch of cumulative or buy and hold of normal returns. So please do use it when you are limited on time or you want to quickly check some hypothesis on some data that you've got. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification button below to never miss new videos that will be constantly released. And in the comments below, I'm welcoming any suggestions for further topics you want me to cover in the future. Thank you very much and stay tuned.